Hey guys, we're gonna do quick videos called 10 things every guitar player should know and no particular order. Let's start with this one. It's called the effects loop. All right, the effects loop on an amp. I want you to understand how effects loops work so that way when you make the decision not to use one or to use one, you're doing it for the right reasons. Effects loops. Everybody generally knows how an overdrive box works, right? Distortion box. Great. An effects loop is essentially exactly like an overdrive box. Here's why. If you have an overdrive box, you've probably learned that if you put a delay, a flanger, or a reverb in front, in other words, from that pedal into the overdrive box, the effect is over the top and it's not very pleasing unless you're looking for that kind of uh, crazy out there kind of sound. But most of us are going to definitely put those kind of effects on the other side of the torsion box. Let's say here, right? Okay. Now, here's how this works. The problem is what if instead of an overdrive box, you use your amplifier's overdrive tone? Same problem. The effects have to come after the distortion tone. So the amp companies make two kind, or make one kind of a, a system. It's called the effects loop. Fender calls this preamp out, power amp in. Everybody else calls it effects send and return. There's no trickery to this. This is all you have to know. A send on an effects loop really means output on a pedal. Just like you would expect, if you had this pedal, output means it would go either to the amp or to the next pedal, right? That is the send on an effects loop or the uh, preamp out on a fender amp. The return, our input on the pedal, is return on the effects loop. In other words, what they're saying is, it, it looking at the effects loop like a pedal, you would send, this is sending this, so think of this, think of this amp as the actual distortion pedal. And now imagine your amp is the distortion pedal. You would then output, which is send, of the effects loop of your distortion pedal, which is your amp, into the next pedal. So in this case, let's say this was a delay pedal, you would send from your amp to the input of this delay pedal. You would output of your delay pedal to the return of the amp, which is basically the input again on the amp. Does that make sense? They use a horrible terminology, right? We should, they should just say input output on this. It would really be less confusing. And like I said, Fender uses preamp out, which they're trying to say the preamp is the sound of the amp out. They're sending that signal out. And the power amp is returning it back to the power amp. That's essentially what's happening, okay? So in your amp, try to picture your amp as two things, a distortion box and a power amp, a section, okay? So essentially, all you're doing is saying, I would like the distortion box, the amp, to be first, then the delay, then the reverb, then to the power section of the amp. I hope that kind of makes sense. But let's say you don't use those kind of effects and you don't care. So an effects loop doesn't have a, a particularly, uh, it's not really important to you. However, there's another huge thing that effects loops are really good for. Most guys are familiar with the idea that if you have a 40 watt or 100 watt tube amp, it's very loud, okay? Even 25 watt amps like this one are so loud, they're hard to practice with at home. So I'm going to show you what you do, what you use an effects loop for to help that. All right, in this particular case, I have a volume pedal. We're very familiar with volume pedals. If you've never used a volume pedal, imagine this. If you put a volume pedal before an overdrive box, what happens is as you go full bore, you're fully distorted. As you back off, you're less distorted. If you put a volume pedal after a distorted box, None of the tone actually changes at all. It just gets loud distortion or less loud distortion. Does that make sense? Same thing. If I send, which is output of the amp, which is the distortion box, the amp is the distortion box, I'm gonna send the signal to the input of the volume pedal, the output of the volume pedal to the return or the back to the, the amp to put it to the power section. I've now essentially inserted this pedal in between the amp's distortion box and the amp's power side. Does that make sense? So now your volume is in between those two. So what happens? This happens. This amp right now is fully cranked. It is cranked right now, and it sounds amazing. Now, watch what happens. Now, something I want you to understand right now so you understand clearly. When this volume is full all right here, that is where the amp is set right now. If you were plugged in this amp, if I pull these, watch what happens if I pull these out. Listen to what happens. That's how loud the amp is, right? By inserting this pedal in between, I am choking how much of that signal now goes to the power section. So what I've effectively done is I'm running my amp hard and loud, but I'm basically killing the volume with this volume hook. So I can practice. Now, let's say you're not a practicer, let's say you gig. Well, essentially it works the same way. You could set this volume, let's say here, comes up a little bit more right 
So essentially you can use it as a boost. Now, if you don't want to use that volume pedal because it's uh, kind of irregular, in other words, where you set it, you can use a boost pedal, especially a low gain boost pedal, or you can use an EQ pedal, okay? And sometimes EQ pedals even work a little better because uh, you can, when you turn it, when you run the gain really low or the volume low, you can kind of fatten it up with the EQ if you want. So either way, that's how you kind of attenuate the sound. Now, a lot of guys will use the same idea, they just don't realize it. If you run a distortion box into the front of your amp, and then you turn the volume down on your distortion box, right, to make your amp quieter, you just did the same thing. It's working the exact same way. We're just using this volume pedal as the volume overall of the pedal, you know, of the distortion box side of the amp. Does it make sense? Now, the uh, other application that people use is a power soak or an attenuator. In other words, they run the actual output of the amplifier into something that basically restricts how much power gets to a speaker. Now, the only thing about that is they're kind of pricey, right? Um, you can find them for about 200 bucks and on up, and some of them are very specific to what ohms the, the amp has to be in the cabinet. Some are variable. Um, either way, and my experience with all of them is they all sound okay, you know, right? I don't really love or hate them, um, but I don't find that for practicing I get anything different than just using what I'm using now, right? So that's how the effects loop works, right? Okay, so now you know. That's one thing down in the 10 things you should know uh, if you're a guitar player. All right, guys, thanks for your time. Know your gear.